Hi. Uh, figured this is somewhat of an appropriate time to go face cam. I have a full script in front of me. I'm just going to be... Hey, buddy. I have a full script in front of me. I'm just going to be reading off of this. Uh, this is mostly an audio-based piece of content uh, anyway. Otherwise, you'd just be looking at random GM Nightfall gameplay. I apologize ahead of time. This is probably going to be a long one. So uh, here we go. Also, evolvepcs.gg. Get yourself a data computer. Check the links in the description. All right, let's go. So um, I did have a Dado's thoughts on Destiny going into 2023 script, mostly written with the main concept of the video being that 2022 basically just felt like 2021 when it came to the issues that I had with the game. But I think that's going to get put on hold as Bungie dropped another article. But this was no ordinary Lightfall article. We're talking a 5,300 word pseudo state of the game type article from game director Joe Blackburn. And he had four big points to discuss. Uh, expand players' imaginations, bring challenge back to destiny, uh, enrich our content, and connect our guardians. All the things that Bungie is planning on working on over the Lightfall era of the game. Let's start with Expand Imaginations. One big thing Bungie is working on for Season of Defiance, which is what Season 20 is named, uh, is reducing complexity of progression systems. Bungie plans on making some changes to bonus chests at the end of seasonal content, for example. Uh, they're also getting rid of umbrals and umbral energies. Uh, we've talked about this, so if you want to focus an engram, you just need glimmer and a seasonal engram, which will be stored on vendors going forward now, so there's no more micromanaging your en engram inventory. No more holding big stacks of seasonal currencies either. Instead of spending currency to unlock a chest at the end of an activity, you will get a key. These keys will drop just during playtime. This was done to make the process simpler, and it is also a part of the goal to position the bonus chest as a true bonus item, not what inevitably becomes the main reason you run a seasonal activity in, like in the first place. You won't get a key every time you do an activity, but to compensate, they're buffing the main loot chest that you get at the end of a seasonal activity to make the bonus chest actually feel meaningful. Keys can drop from seasonal content as well, meaning you won't need to run the strike playlist or go into Crucible in order to get them. Bungie is also renaming a lot of items to be simpler to understand. You know, maybe more things like Defiance Key and less Vestiges of, oh my God, I couldn't even remember it. Vestiges, vestiges, vestiges of Dread from season 17. That was a real moment that I had writing that script, by the way. Uh, or like map coordinates or like whatever else it was. It's just key is key. And that's it. It's just a key. And, that, and we're good. Season 21 called Season of the Deep. And Season 22 called... I don't know yet. Uh, will not feature a vendor upgrade system. That doesn't mean it's never coming back, but Bungie wants to work on different methods of showing progression and investment in a season. In both of these seasons, Bungie is looking to make fresher gameplay experiences, sort of what like they did with uh, Season of the Risen's activity, which I thought was pretty good as far as a, a seasonal content uh, activity goes. Um, Bungie also wants to cast a pretty wide net when it comes to tone in each season. Uh, this past year shifted in tone a lot. We went from Season of the Haunted, which was like super scary, spooky, real stuff, to LOL, we're pirates now. Um, and, you know, they just want to keep things feeling fresh for every single drop. Sorry about that. Uh, as we know, Guardian ranks and loadouts are coming to Lightfall, and Guardian rank will be replacing Season rank in terms of the number that you see displayed by someone's character. Instead of showing you how much they've grinded in a season, the Guardian rank number should be more representative of your experience in the game as a whole. When you see someone at the max rank, you know that they've probably done everything that the game has to offer. Next up, weapon crafting. Uh, changes are common. Too many random drops in the game can feel inconsistent. Too many crafted drops ruins the fun of getting those random drops in the first place. 
In Lightfall, fewer weapons will be craftable and more of the weapons with long-term sources will get value from random perk rolls. But in order to allow non-crafted to compete with crafted enhanced perks, more weapons will gain the ability to become enhanced starting with raid adept weapons. Enhancing a weapon will allow you to adopt some of the systems seen on crafted weapons like mementos and levels and access to enhanced perks, but only with the perks that you actually have on the gun. It's not gonna turn into a crafted weapon completely. Uh, you should be able to eventually bring a non-crafted gun up to the level of a crafted with enhanced perks after enough time investment, money investment. Sorry, in-game currency investment, not real money. Uh, this will roll out with Lightfall Adept uh, Raid Weapons with Season of the Deep, Season 21. They want to expand on this in the long term to get more guns, but there are a bunch of tech issues to solve first. I'm using my hands a lot. I'm sorry. I like to talk with my hands. When it comes to Deep Sight weapons, you'll never see a weapon have Deep Sight on it if it's not a craftable gun. So when you see one going forward, you know it's important. Bungie will also add a mechanic to activate Deep Sight on any craftable weapon you don't have the pattern for in Season 21. Okay. Next point is bringing challenge back to Destiny. Uh, feels like I have heard this one before, so uh, let's see what's up here. Bungie believes the baseline difficulty for the game as a whole is too low. I would agree. Uh, Light 3.0 subclasses not only raised the power of our characters through our subclass choices, but also increased our synergy with weapons. While this makes for a fun experience, it made us really, really strong. Bungie will be keeping multi multiple uh, difficulty levels in content, Nightfalls, Dungeons, Secret Missions, Campaign, etc., etc. Um, Bungie can't just buff enemies because then they'll be too tanky and they'll just one-shot us, uh, but they can't nerf us too much because then it feels like none of the build crafting choices we make matter at all. Across all aspects of the game, Bungie believes that abilities dominate the game because of potency and uptime, but they don't want to nerf potency, so we're looking at uptime. As we spoke about, Bungie is hitting this pain point by nerfing ability regeneration via stats. So tier eight stats right now will become the new tier 10 in Lightfall. But they're also noticing that enemy combatants aren't hitting as hard as they want. Who would have thought that 40% damage reduction uh, with even more resistance mods eh, maybe would have done something like that. So they're increasing the cost of resilience mods by one. A miner's going to go from one to two, a major from three to four, putting them on the level of recovery and like sort of intellect, even though intellect's kind of a dead stat right now. But that's not all. I did finish reading that paragraph and I was like, okay, that, that can't be it. <laughs> that cannot be it. It is not it. Bungie's happy with the difficulty of base heist battlegrounds, which made it so you would always be five levels under the content, no matter what your level is. Sorry, I'm literally just checking my microphone to make sure I'm recording. Probably should have checked that 10 minutes ago. Uh, the base battlegrounds playlist in season 20 will also use this feature. The Vanguard Ops playlist will also get this difficulty tweak, but they're not dialing it up as much as Battlegrounds. This is to make the Vanguard playlist a lot more engaging, which is the nicest way I think you could say that. They're also going to apply something like this to the Neo Muna patrol zones. Uh, they don't want the entire game feeling like a legendary campaign, but they do want to beef up some of the more tame things in the game. All right, I need a tissue. That's a big bean, buddy. This big old bean. Bungie also plans on doing even more experiments this year when it comes to power in Destiny 2. Uh, while Lightfall will have a power climb similar to the Witch Queen, in Season of the Deep, Season 21, they don't plan to raise the power or pinnacle cap at all. Uh, the final shape will have a big change to the system, but they want to use the Lightfall era to understand more about what can be improved. That being said, Bungie still wants to make sure people have plenty of stuff to sink their teeth into. So let's start with the Crucible. Why not? Bungie added some new modes last year. They're not done with trying to, you know, add more ways to play. Countdown is going to be back in Season 20 along with a respawn version called Countdown Rush. <coughs> Excuse me. Where <laughs> I got so excited. Uh, where you need to blow up or defuse both bombs uh, before the round ends. 
Crucible Labs will be back with a mode where the player's sandbox is dramatically changed, like ability uptime, weapon damage, ammo, in a mode tentatively called Checkmate Control. This is not all they have planned. Bungie thinks that reigning in player power and new modes and maps will help PvP. Meltdown is coming back in Season 21. That's an old map for uh, you new players. A new Vex-themed map in Season 22. And Citadel will be returning in Season 23. Matchmaking, still an ongoing process. Bungie doesn't feel like they've hit the sweet spot between uh, fair matches and good connections just yet. They are continuing to tune that. Uh, they want to continue to upgrade the meta systems that make people want to play PvP. They're looking at trials. They want the population of trials to be a little more steady year round and are trying to incentivize it. And in competitive, they want to improve the speed where players go to the rank that matches their skill the most and show why you won or lost uh, the specific number of points that you gained or lost in a match. Uh, next, PvE. Bungie is adding an exotic mission rotator into the game in Season 22. This is going to feature missions from the past that rotate on a weekly basis. You got Presage, you got Vox Obscura, Seraph Shield are going to be the first three missions in the rotator, with Bungie hopefully bringing back more from the past. Strikes. The Strike playlist uh, sucks. It's not, it's not great. Uh, we spoke already about what they plan on doing with the difficulty of strikes, uh, but there's still more. First, they are refreshing Lake of Shadows and Arms Dealer. Both have had their objectives and encounters changed and upgraded to match newer things like Proving Grounds and Lightblade. They're also taking strikes like Exodus Crash and Inverted Spire and dramatically reducing their presence in the Vanguard Ops playlist and uh, removing them from Nightfall rotations. It seems like Bungie wants to buff these up like Lake and Arms Dealer, but until they do, they don't really want players to see these strikes very often. The Season 16 and 19 Battlegrounds will be added to the Vanguard Ops playlist. A uh, pretty big fan of that. Also, certain Battlegrounds will be added to the Nightfall rotation, with Mars Heist Battleground being added in Season 20 with more expected to follow. Four of the six Nightfalls in Season of Defiance will be new or refreshed content as they come to the Grandmaster Nightfall stage. Okay, okay. Uh, Bungie is also looking at rebalancing some objectives and making some targeted changes to ritual content based on what they have observed about why people play the content. Nothing is expected for Season 20, but they want to start pushing both more rewards to ritual content and more options to engage with ritual content. For example, they want to move the initial source of obtaining exotics back to the core rituals instead of exotics. They don't want people or sorry, they don't want to ask people to earn all three ornaments for the ritual weapon of the season in seasonal challenges. And they want people to earn more new things and do more of their weekly challenges by playing the by playing what they want to play, not just being in the new seasonal playlist. Uh, this will be developed on over the year. Final point is connect our guardians. Commendations are an icebreaker. It's a way of reaching out to someone you don't know to say, Thanks for being a good teammate. Certain commendations are locked to certain activities. Trials will have unique ones like Saint's Favorite or Pace Setter, while dungeons and raids will have things like Perceptive or Knowledgeable. Uh, people at the highest Guardian ranks will have proven to be people that are appreciated by others in the community with commendations and are also some of the most accomplished Guardians in the game. Uh, the chat experience, game-wide text chat is changing from opt-in to opt-out. Tons of people will be thrown into text channels into the game, probably something that not a lot of people even know exists. Uh, and this is going to give more opportunities for players to reach out to each other. Bungie also wants to invest into more text features, like more chat moderation, filtering, and even speech-to-text. Not text-to-speech, speech-to-text. Um, However, you are not being forced to keep up text chat. Uh, you just need to opt out, which is a couple of button clicks away in the settings menu. No big deal if you don't want text chat. Finally, Fireteam Leader. Initially, they wanted to launch this in Season 22, but they need more time, so it looks like it's going to be in time for Season 23 alongside a new dungeon. 
They want to make sure it has a ton of features before it goes live, like queuing anywhere in the game, uh, tagging your posts with keywords, making groups where people can join automatically, or making it so you need to approve each member individually. Uh, I'm sure Bungie is going to have more info on this as we get closer to launch. That was everything in the post, uh, summarized as best as I could. Um, I got to say, while I think everything here is, is really good or mostly good, Anyways, um, I didn't really get a huge reaction out of anything. Nothing made me really have that, oh, whoa, like moment or anything like that. Uh, that could just be because we've seen a good chunk of things already. Uh, I don't know, but I didn't have that like, that big like, oh, okay, okay, whoa, like big moment that I was, uh, that I was kind of hoping for. Let's break this all down, starting with uh, expand players' imaginations here. I know we've talked about the umbral engram changes already, but to recap, I'm a fan. Uh, I often spend a good portion of my inventory management uh, time deleting umbral engrams because I don't really focus them that often. Anything that shifts the inventory burden off of me to an NPC, yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of that. Conceptually, I like the idea of having the bonus chest be a true bonus and not the main thing you interact with. It was rare for me personally, uh, since I wasn't exactly running like 15 catch crashes in a row or anything like that. But the feeling that you were wasting your time in a seasonal activity because you didn't have the right currencies at the end for the actual loot, uh, that sucks. Uh, it seems like these loot keys could potentially unlock uh, loot from any seasonal activities loot chest. Uh, I could be totally wrong there. It just really depends on how Bungie is going to play things out with the system. Maybe the keys work for all seasons. Maybe we have seasonal keys that only work in those pieces of content. We don't know. Um, you know, while you, an active Datto watcher and perhaps also enjoyer, uh, may think that a lot of these systems aren't really that complex to understand, uh, which I don't think they are either. There are thousands of players who get overwhelmed by such things. Uh, the season vendor tells you exactly how the season works every season, right in that little window. Um, but I still make a, si a video every season, uh, and those videos still do really well, if that is any proof. Um, I think simplifying things down is probably for the best. I'm, I'm not really here to gatekeep understanding different economic systems every season. Uh, this is not something I really feel adds to the game in any significant way. Reducing the complexity of gaining loot in this way is not going to change my overall enjoyment of the game, at least until we figure out, you know, maybe what the drop rates are like. Uh, but conceptually, this does not seem like something that would really bother anyone at all. And I, I know people are definitely going to be a fan of getting rid of the upgrade grid. All right, quick hair check. We're looking good. We've spoken plenty about how Bungie needs to change up the seasonal model to make things uh, feel not too samey, too consistent. Uh, while consistency is good to a degree, I, I think, you know, season 13 through 19 have been the most consistent years in Destiny. Uh, an occasional shift is nice. Uh, I'm not going to dwell on this part too much. I think we all know what the deal is. And if I do come out with my Dado's thoughts on Destiny going into 2023 video, we'll talk about it more. Um, Bungie just needs to show us what they got in Season 21 and beyond. Guardian ranks replacing seasonal ranks is a good change uh, to me. Seasonal ranks don't really mean anything other than how much did you play this season? They're not an indicator of much else. Guardian ranks feel like a better, a better indicator of what kind of player that player is, like in terms of experience. I've seen plenty of low season rank players just crushing it. And I've seen plenty of like 200 plus, 300 plus players who I'm pretty sure don't even know what activity they're in. Uh, it's a lot easier as like a player to see a rank one or a two or a three with guardian ranks and be like, oh, they're just a new player. They don't know what they're doing. Let me help them out. Versus seeing like a rank 300 seasonal player playing terribly and be like, how are you still bad at the game? You, you're rank 300. There's no way. So I, I, I like that change from, from that perspective anyway. Weapon crafting changes. A Bungie has really been through the ringer with, weapon crafting, uh, so many shifts and changes over the year. 
but probably for the better. I think all the changes have been pretty good. There's a lot of craftable weapons out there. Uh, seasons 17 and 19 had 10 weapons per vendor. Uh, then you had the raid, you had the dungeon, the dares craftables. It's a lot. Deep stone. I'm not saying everyone should be grinding for every single gun out there, but it's still a lot. Uh, personally, I am a fan of them reducing the amount of craftable weapons out there. It, it makes things feel more manageable. It makes grinding for all of them feel like more of a realistic goal than a chore. Um, but the addition of making it so non-craftable weapons can be upgraded to enhanced perks and have all the bells and whistles that crafted weapons do is really nice. I know that enhanced perks aren't the biggest deal in the world and that you can live without them, but there was always something, you know, poking me in the back of my mind about it. Like, you could, you could enhance them, you could. We're starting with raid adept weapons though, not exactly like the biggest pool of, of guns out there. So don't expect any world drops with enhanced traits, you know, three days into Lightfall. But I, I'm, I'm pretty on board with this. I, I think how you feel about this really depends on how you feel about being able to grind for a specific thing versus RNG drops. I'm more kind of 50-50. Other people are like, let me literally craft everything. Other people are like, I don't want to craft anything at all. I don't want any responsibilities. I think this kind of just depends on how you feel about those systems. Bring challenge back to Destiny. I was pretty skeptical about seeing this section. I feel like we've heard this a lot, and at uh, one point this year, I basically lost hope that Bungie would ever nerf us again and we would be in baby game mode forever. Uh, fortunately, that is not the case. Uh, we spoke about some of this already, but, uh, you know, Bungie is nerfing ability regeneration rates a little bit with the stat nerfs. I think that is totally fine on paper. We'll see what it's like in game. My worry is that with the mod changes that we still might just be absolutely ridiculous, but we'll see if that happens or not. Bungie making resilience cost more energy per mod was not something I exactly saw coming in addition to the tier 10 resilience change being only 30% resistance as opposed to 40% resistance. But I think the change makes sense. Resilience is absolutely on the same stage as recovery in terms of their stat values, arguably more so nowadays. With other mod costs coming down, I don't see this being a huge deal, but it definitely will have some ramica ramifications to build crafting as a whole. And then I was very worried about that being the end of that section. And I was like, okay, there's no way that is it. There's definitely got to be more. And there was. Heist Battleground difficulty has been really nice for the game, in my opinion. I like being moderately challenged in day-to-day -day activities. It makes all of my build crafting work actually feel like it's paying off. It's tough to appreciate builds in the strike playlist, for example, because there's no stakes, there's no difficulty. You're not getting to show off your build at all. All this hard work, grinding all this armor, setting it up properly, there's no payoff. It's, it's why patrol kind of sucks outside of many other issues with patrol. I love seeing this get adopted by future seasons and the Vanguard Ops playlist, although the Vanguard playlist won't be as difficult, but man would I love a playlist that matches uh, seasonal difficulty. Even the Legend campaign, I, I would take that too. Maybe a click down from Legend campaign. With such a heavy emphasis on build crafting and making your perfect guardian killing machine, we need content to support that. We need content that can let us show how powerful we've become, but still not be a walk in the park. I want that payout. I want that moment where my build comes together and everything works, but it's because I played well, not because the content itself is just too weak to even fight back. The throne world is sadly a pathetic patrol experience when it comes to combat. Sure, it's a great destination aesthetically, and it's got some secrets here and there, and visually it looks awesome, but it's, it's so empty. There's, there's barely any enemies at all. It feels like most of the work into combat went into the lost sectors. And on top of that, they're just the, the enemies that are there are just pathetic. I want to have a better patrol experience, a better exploration experience. I want to be fearful of certain things on patrol and not just because I'm under leveled. Neomuna is a city under siege. There better be enemies everywhere I go, or at least in certain sections of the city. 
you know, I hope Neo Muno's patrol experience is a, a bit more action packed than your typical patrol experience because it's the patrol is just. I understand it's not supposed to be this super high octane thing, but like, you know, throw it like a secret boss out there somewhere, it spawns every out. I don't know. You can do so much more. Um, power levels. Uh, not a big section in the article itself, but still had some pretty big notes like season 21. They're not raising the power or a pinnacle cap. It begs the question, is this the beginning of the end for power levels in Destiny? Uh, we don't know if season 21 is a like, complete shift in the winds or if it's just like a one time break from leveling like ah, season 21, take a breather. Uh, I've been saying for months now that I think Bungie is in get to the finish line mode where they're so close to the final shape and the end of this era of the game that anything that isn't in complete shambles is probably safe from major changes because they just want to get to the end. So power to me is something that isn't broken enough that I think Bungie was gonna spend a ton of time to try to fix when they could just do it post final shape and just revamp a whole bunch of stuff at the same time. But if they feel confident enough to wanna tackle it uh, during this year, during the expansion, before the expansion, I, you know, I'm not gonna argue. I'm not gonna argue, it's their game. Again, leveling is not just something that you can rip out of the game and throw it out the window and the problems are solved. It's a much more complex issue than that. Uh, Joe also says that there are uh, some major issues with power in Destiny 2 and how it prevents players from seeing some of our best content, which isn't even the biggest issue about leveling, but I'd say it is some modicum of level of an issue. That probably wasn't English. Um, Crucible, we're getting some old maps back, we're getting a new map, we're getting some old map, uh, modes back, we're getting some new modes. Uh, good stuff there, although my belief as a, as a Crucible casual is that Crucible mostly lives and dies by how good the sandbox is at any given moment. Right now, the sandbox is throw abilities every 30 seconds and have an overshield the whole game which is not fun to, to fight against. I wanna see how the sandbox is in PVP first before I care about new maps and modes because if the gameplay is not fun, I'm not even going to see the new maps or the new modes uh, because I will not be playing in the first place. That is just my perspective. I'm not too surprised otherwise about the amount of stuff that we saw for PVP, although competitive basically only getting one line is a little bit of a bummer. Uh, it needs more features like lever protection for one. Exotic mission rotator is pretty cool, but the missions that everyone wants to see, like Whisper and Outbreak, are not there. I understand why they're not. These missions came out pre Beyond Light engine shift, which likely means that Bungie needs to more or less completely rebuild these missions, which they probably have not had the time to do. And also, if you're Bungie, do you spend time completely rebuilding old content or do you spend time building completely new content? Eh, you know, kind of an easy call to make there. Uh, so I understand. Um, a lot of people have said that the exotic missions are some of the best content in the game. I would agree. And that they wish that, you know, they would stay and all that. Like, it seems like a waste, you know, for Seraph Shield to only exist for three months. I personally want to see people put their money where their mouth is when this playlist comes to the game. Part of me feels like this is some... Oh my God, can't believe Bungie is removing some of the least played destinations and content from their game to make room for new stuff. Uh, where they, you know, where people just kind of want to be mad about something even though they weren't playing that content that often to begin with, if at all. Like, let's be real. Are you still playing Seraph Shield after you get all the catalysts for Revision Zero? W were you still playing Presage for the love of the game? You know, what, what I can understand is incentivizing these missions with like a pinnacle reward, although who knows what's happening with that anymore. And people saying that they'd rather run like a Vox Obscura or a Presage for a pinnacle drop than the Strike playlist. I get that. I totally get that. Completely agree with that. But a part of me deep down feels like this is more like, ah, I, I was on Titan all the time. How could you remove this? And it's like, no, no, you weren't. Come on. The thing that did get me the most excited 
and I, I can't believe I'm saying this after a full state of the game type post, was the strike refresh with Lake of Shadows and Arms Dealer. Lake of Shadows, not exactly at the top of my list in terms of like best strikes or anything like that, but I'd rather have it than nothing. Um, one of the things I've been preaching about all year is the fact that so much content is living in a Destiny 1.0, 2.0, even 3.0 world when us as players are at like 5.0, 6.0 power levels, right? That old content needs to be revitalized. It needs a facelift. It needs to be reworked to make it worth playing in the current sandbox. That is exactly what Bungie appears to be doing. Finally, I'm not expecting anything revolutionary here. It's Lake of Shadows. Like, let's keep things grounded, right? It's Lake of Shadows. It's a strike. But it would certainly help my interest in playing something like the Vanguard Ops playlist or like actually being excited about them being the Nightfall again. Uh, this is why stuff like Battlegrounds has been entering the Vanguard Ops playlist. Not only are they appropriate duration levels of activities, but they're somewhat updated to today's standards and people enjoy them. I'm also excited to see Battlegrounds enter Grandmaster Nightfall World. I know early on when GMs were new, you know, whenever we had a new strike enter the rotation, it was it was a fun little moment of like, oh, Tuesday, new hard PvE thing. Let's go figure it out. To have that feeling come back maybe, you know, once or, or a couple times per season for the next little while, I think that's going to be really nice. The rest of this, you know, we're going to keep pretty brief. Rebalancing of rewards, not much to say here. Uh, I love that I won't even need to think about getting the ritual weapon ornament from Gambit. Uh, not that I was doing that to begin with. Um, oh, speaking of which, Gambit. No Gambit notes. None. Uh, you know, can't say I blame them. You know, I think people uh, would have appreciated some notes on exotic farming uh, from Lost Sectors as we've gotten a ton of exotics recently and people would love a bit more of a targeted method of farming them outside of, you know, waiting for arm day and just hoping for the best. Commendations seem neat, but I don't ever really feel like I've enjoyed their presence that much because it just felt like something i was obligated to do like in overwatch or something it's like if you won ah, commendations for everyone ah, we did great if you lost uh rage leave the game immediately no commendations there's obviously nothing wrong with having this system in the game at all it's just like a little note that i wanted to make about commendations i think they're totally fine uh chat being chat being opt out instead of opt in i think is a great change i think it should have been like this from the get-go obviously not everyone wants to be a part of that experience you can turn it off and never look back after two button presses opt out might introduce some people to a part of the game that they did not even know existed which is talking to other people fire team finder looks pretty neat uh, but with it so far away i i don't have a ton to mention other than this is probably what Guardian Games should have been uh, all those years ago. I'm glad something is coming to the game at some point. Seems like Bungie has a pretty good feature list for it, but you know, you know, in, until it's actually here, I don't really have that much to say other than that. That's neat. Um, also, I don't really LFG anything in the game, so I, I don't even know what kind of commentary I would have to offer on a feature like this when it does uh, come out. That is, uh, that's the whole thing. Good post. Overall, good post. Nothing it blew me away. I didn't have this crazy wow moment. Uh, but there wasn't a whole lot I found myself disagreeing with either. Uh, this is all good stuff, but the main pain point of the past year is still very much the seasonal content cadence, removing some of that predictability in favor of some more experimental stuff. That's all I got. Sorry, this ran kind of long. Uh, let me know how you're feeling in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.